Hi everybody, my name is Keith Uber. I'm the Vice President of Sales Engineering at UbiSecure. Today I'm going to present to you the path to zero trust by securing customer and partner identities. In today's presentation, we're going to look at customer identity and access management and how that relates to zero trust. But first to make sure that term is understood, this is about the management, the registration, the authentication, the authorization of all of the users and agents who are not in your own organization, who are not on your payroll, who are not, for example, in your Active Directory. These are external users to your organization. These are customers, partners, suppliers. Uh, in government, these are the citizens. This can be remote workers or other legal entities interacting with your business. CM helps deliver better digital experiences and improve security in these cases. And this happens across many different businesses or many different flows, such as business to consumer, business to business, business to business to X, where you have chains of companies working together to, to serve a user group, for government to citizen, government to business, and also for business to employee. Because zero trust is not a product and it's not a solution. It's an architecture and a paradigm. It's something that can't be bought. It consists of many different components. And it's a, it's a journey because you have to do it step by step and build on what you already have to move towards the zero trust world. So in a zero trust world, you don't trust anybody by default. You want to verify and authenticate every actor in your network as they make transactions. You do that across the network because the network no longer has any perimeter and no more boundaries. And today I want to look at five reasons why CM is crucial in a zero trust environment. The first one is just that, that zero trust applies all across the user groups. Think about customers, groups of customers getting together, Think of citizens and families. These external users behave very differently to your, your internal workforce. These are not on your payroll. They're not paid to follow the instructions that you give them. They're not bound by the rules uh, that you set. They don't attend your training courses. They don't get fired if they do something wrong. External users are a picky bunch. They have the ability to change their supplier at will, um, move, to, move to other services. They're also tricky because you don't have the ability, like an employee, to proof the identity to find out who they actually are. You need a process in place to allow remote proofing of these external users, to either link them to a, a legal, legal identity or legal documentation, depending on the, the uh, compliance requirements for, for your use case, and tie them also oftentimes to an organization that they're working on behalf of. The second element is it's important to have smart multi-factor authentication management. Multi-factor authentication is crucial in enabling zero trust architectures, because you need to have faith. Network calls being made are made by a user, and that, that traffic is, is genuine and has not been uh, is not being wrongly used. So you need to have processes in place to allow the user to interact conveniently with your service, but when required, you can perform step-up authentication, re-authenticate the user, re-verify, make sure that they're, they're still who they say they are. For example, before you making a high-value transaction, making a transaction that can't be re reversed. Or if there are signals in the network which make it appear that uh, there's something suspicious about this, this user or, or the flow. In all of those cases, it has to be a situation where it's very easy to use for those untrained external users. They need to either have access to multi-factor authentication products which they already use today, for example, at, at other services, or make it as simple to use that they don't need any training or support so that your IT help desk is not burdened by their cries for help. Oftentimes, 
In many jurisdictions, many regions, it's common to use an external MFA provider or service. And this is a great way to make the login process or the authentication process familiar for the, for the users and a quick way to reach out to, to those user groups. The third thing is the balance of user experience and security. Uh, external users are much more demanding about the user experience of the software that they've chosen to use as a customer. It has to be easy to use and quick to respond. The customer identity access management software must be able to cope with the extreme number of high number of users, high number of logins, high number of uh, token validations that are occurring and needs to be able to do that at scale. If they have to wait for pages to load or wait for things to happen, they're going to vote with their feet and find a competing product which is a little bit more easy to use and a little bit more snappy. The end user should also be able to manage their own account, all self-service, all remotely, without having to pick up a telephone or write an email or perform a chat. The services need to be easy to use through a, a simple customer portal. The fourth topic is that the access and security policy management must be robust. PM is a great place to centralize policies for choosing which, accesses, uh, which users get access to which resources, they get access at the right time, with the right level, level of authentication and, and assurance. You want to be able to use the ideas of least privilege and minimal disclosure. So this is making sure that users have access only to the minimum set of information that they need to complete a transaction that's applicable for them and not, not one right more. You shouldn't spread attributes or information about a user to services that don't need them or require them. So minimal disclosure is passing only the minimum set of information about a user to, to third party services. The fifth topic is about things which are unique to customer and identity access management compared to enterprise identity access management. One of the main things uh, and a powerful thing to, for, for customers is that very typical in business that the person who buys a service is not the person who's using it. And the buyer is typically not an individual but a team or a department or even the whole organization. So the customer identity access management system has to be able to cope with complex delegation scenarios. For example, I buy software for my team and I can delegate to my team members uh, to, to have access. I can appoint one person as an administrator to decide who else can join the team and, and cope with changes in, for example, changes in my team and be able to make those changes uh, rapidly in the, in the target service. But more and more companies outsource or buy services from, from third parties. So an organization might have their core, their, their core business, but everything else is outsourced. They buy HR services, they buy marketing services, tax is done by a tax agent. In all of those cases, many of those players and parties need access to the same information within the same information systems, which may be hosted by, by your business. You need a way to allow users to invite not only individuals external to their own organization, but also organizations as a whole, and allow those other organizations to determine, if desired, which individuals within that organization have access to the client information. And these uh, delegation scenarios, these mandates, also called electronic power of attorney, these situations can get very complex very quickly. Obiscure software supports four different types of delegation. There's a direct user to user delegation. There's a user to organization delegation, organization to organization, and then organization to an individual. And combinations of these, these are possible and also chaining onwards. And that leads to another topic called representation governance. And this is making sure that the people who are acting on behalf of a company actually have the legal right to do transactions on behalf of the company. Typically, this involves things like 
uh, checking contractual information or government registries. And we do that together with uh, our work around legal entity identifiers, which is a global unique identifier for legal entities, for organizations. But to recap on these five topics, the first one was that zero trust applies to all users and subjects, not only your internal employees. But it's important to employ smart, multi-factor authentication and easy tools to manage those multi-factor authentication methods. You need to always keep in mind the balance between user experience and security. Make the, make the configuration and setup flexible and easy for users to, to enjoy. You should have powerful policy management, centralized, auditable policies that can be uh, easily reviewed in, in, in one place, not only by the end users themselves, but also from the administrative side. And the fifth one we just saw about the special requirements of customers, partners, and external users, where this cross-organization, delegation, mandates, and power of attorneys is commonplace. I want to say a few words about UbiSecure. UbiSecure is a, is a forerunner in the customer identity access management space. We've been doing this type of work for 20 years. We're European focused, and we have a, a large history of successful deployed projects, both for enterprise, but also in the government space, powering important government programs. Our software scales to large deployments with hundreds of thousands of organizations and millions of users. And we're very active in the technical standard, um, standardization process, and also in uh, various industry and government working groups. We have a very simple subscription model. We're available both as an on-premise deployment and in a cloud deployment. And more and more, we're seeing companies choose a hybrid deployment. We're very easy to do business with. And we invite you to find out more information from our website at ubisecure.com. You can contact us at sales at ubisecure.com. And uh, thank you for your time today.